here's something interesting we're, we're going to show you. This is the Carmen pepper, sweet pepper. Here's all your data is right here. I can I don't need to show you the seed pack because there is no seed pack. I do have a data sheet I put together, so we'll take a look at that, I guess. Um, here's all your info on the back. There's your scatter code. And, uh, yeah, I bought these at Lowe's. These are Abani's plants. Uh, I didn't buy these this year. These are, these are F2s. Uh, these are the seeds from last year's plants. So, um, this plant is, I've grown them last year. It can get pretty big. Uh, three, four feet isn't out of the question on this. Um, the fruits are very sweet, just like any other sweet pepper. Uh, interesting taste is, uh, if I remember correctly, it has a uh, nice, if you let them ripen all the way, it has a nice, smooth, sweet uh, flavor. It goes really good in uh, salads and, and barbecues and stir fries, uh, sautés, uh, uh, shish kebabs. It just, it has, if you let them ripen all the way, they got a really nice flavor on them. Anyway, uh, the stem on this plant is uh, very rigidy, very rigidy, all right, it's smooth, it's actually waxy smooth, wax smooth, it's just, there's no, nothing on it, smooth, you could, you could slide up and down easy on it, here's a fruit, it's a baby, these get to around, if I remember the ones I were getting last year were anywhere between, say, four inches roughly. And towards the end of the year, the, the fruits start to taper off in size, but I was getting fruits anywhere between four and eight inches, something like that. Uh, they get about maybe an inch and a half in diameter, somewhere around that, and they're nice and long, tapered type of a fruit. Um, the leaves are... They're pretty much a standard type of a uh, pepper leaf, you know, like bell pepper. It's a standard bell pepper leaf to me, uh, broadleaf, in the broadleaf family, but it's like a standard type of leaf. No specific features on the leaf itself. Uh, let's see, you got purpling on the nodes. There's no purpling on any part of the other stems. Uh, here's a flower. Let me show you a flower if I don't snap it off. Okay, that's a flower. All right. See, all the flowers come out of the nodes. So every time your plant tops and splits, you're going to get more and more peppers. But keep something in mind, because I used to top peppers and everything like that. The more you top your plant and the more bushy it gets, the more peppers you get, the smaller your peppers are going to get, too. Um, if you take, like, a pepper that normally produces... Uh, uh, a plant like this that normally produces large peppers produces anywhere between uh, 8 and 12 peppers a year or something like that for the season. And you top that off trying to get more of those out of the plant, like you try to squeeze them out. Uh, you're going to get a lot smaller peppers. You're not really going to be walking away with 8 inch, you know, humongous peppers. You're going to end up with like smaller ones, 4s and 6s. And, and then if you keep topping it, then it gets, gets smaller and smaller to fruit though generally get as large now you might get one or two large ones here and there but generally you're you're causing the plant to um produce smaller fruit that that's my experience anyway that's what that's why i don't top my plants i let them grow wild full wild is the best thing you can do because then the, the genetics get to in the plant they get to extend themselves fully um you know, and uh, fully become what they're supposed to become. And you want those genetics recorded into the seeds of your plant, of your heirlooms, year after year after year as you climatize your seeds. It's very important you do that. If you start training your plants to become something else, the plant's going to genetically record that into its seeds. So just keep that in mind as you grow your plants. I personally like to let, leave my plants alone. I don't, I don't sucker them. I don't top them. I don't do anything like that. Just let them grow. And then that way I have the real seeds that I can grow every year that will give me that same plant. Now, you could top the plant and you could do all that stuff, but I wouldn't save the seeds from, the, from that particular uh, plant that you're doing it to. Because I don't want to record that into the seed uh, genome uh, for that far, further generation in the future. So, uh, yeah, you can top them and do all the suckering you want, but don't save the seeds from it. So you, you're better off just leaving one or two plants aside just for seed. So you don't do anything to it if you really have the need to do all the topping and stuff like that. 
Anyways, uh, yeah, Lowe's, Lowe's, uh, Reseed F2, um, Bonnie Plants, and, uh, this is it. We're going on, uh, year two. We'll see how many years we can run this before the genetics begin to change, or maybe it'll stay consistent. I don't know if it's a hybrid. I, I see both, uh, information on it, hybrid and heirloom. So, we'll see if it's stable, and, uh, I'll tell you what the results are of growing the seeds from the Carmen pepper from Bonnie Funny Plants. And that's it. Did I cover everything? I gave you the leaves, the flowers, I showed you the fruit. I just want to make sure I got you covered. Uh, I got two plants in the five gallon panel. You'll see how they do. They usually get three, four feet. Um,